Hello everybody. Um, okay, let's <clears throat> let's check uh, that everyone can see and hear me. Right. Please let me know. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Do I exist on the internet? Okay, I can see uh, I can see some comments coming in here. Uh, yeah, please let me know. Yeah, okay, awesome. You can see and hear me. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, yeah, we're using some new software here. Uh, it's probably going to go wrong because that's kind of what happens when I do these things. <laughs> but hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, I'm flying solo tonight. Adam's unavailable, unfortunately. Um, but we've got some really, really cool stuff to get through. Um, people have been submitting questions, <coughs> excuse me, using Slido. Uh, earlier today uh, so we've got some questions that have already been submitted for the live stream um, but please drop them in the chat here if you've got any questions that you want us to ask might be about guitars might be about music might be about learning the guitar might be about anything music culture bands artists music production anything music related is on the agenda tonight everybody we can chat i hope that this new um time that we'll that we're streaming at tonight works for you guys. Uh, I wanted us to do a slightly later show uh, because we have loads and loads of Americans that follow our work uh, and Canadians. And uh, we usually do the live streams earlier in the day, uh, but I wanted to at least try doing one later on in the day to make it a bit more accessible for people who are on the Western side of the Atlantic. Um, all right, yeah, cool. So come on, tell me where's everybody at? Where's everybody from? I, right now, I'm in Chester, in England. Eric's here from Florida. Awesome. Robert's here from Michigan in the USA. Hi, Mike, you are loud and clear. Uh, hi, Mike, you are loud and clear. Are you covering finger-picking techniques tonight? Yeah, we can certainly talk about that. Yeah, no worries, Taggart. We can cover that. I love finger-picking. One of my favorite ways to play. Generally how I play most of the time when I'm at home with my acoustic guitar. Uh, Robert here from Michigan. Awesome. Wilmington, Delaware. Catford. I think that's Essex way, I think. Anna's here from Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. And Janet. Awesome. Janet's here from Florida. Um, brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for letting us know where you're from. Um... Yeah, cool. That's that's great, Stuart. I think that's the benefit of doing the live stream a bit later, is that you know people won't be in work, um, and hopefully everyone can just you know hang out, and it's more of a relaxed vibe. I've got a beer. I'm in re I'm in relaxation mode. I encourage you to join me. What have we got here? Okay, when learning a new song, should I learn small parts at full speed or learn all of the parts at a slower speed? Well, yeah. Let's just jump into let's jump into some Q and A straight away. Um, thank you, everybody. I can see a real mix of people from all, all over the world. Um, awesome to see. Thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's amazing, isn't it, that we can all come together like this and talk about guitars and music in this way from all over the world. It's, it's still amazing to me. Um, okay, so yeah, let, let's, um, let's, let's dive in. So when learning a new song, should I learn small parts at full speed or learn all the parts at a slower speed? So I always say, think the best way to learn any new song is always in in bite-sized steps and then you feel like you're making satisfying progress so i think the best um the best thing to do is to just break the song into its constituent parts you know most songs are made up of a verse most popular music is made up of a verse a bridge and a chorus there might be some other sections a middle eight an intro an outro um a reprise you know the, there's different parts of course but almost every piece of popular music is made up of verse and a, a bridge and a chorus and if you learn those three parts distinctly um then you can then stitch them together i think it's better to just learn them like that if it's something that's challenging um and i always think it's best to learn slow and get it right if it's chord based stuff then you know it's okay to bite off a little bit more than you can chew you know if you're doing chord based stuff Everybody, please let me know that you can hear the guitar okay. Sometimes the software that we use squashes the guitar. It thinks it's background noise. 
and it will prioritize my voice. I've turned it off, but I just want to check it works okay. Can you hear the guitar okay? So yeah, if you're learning chord based stuff, I think it's okay to just dive straight in. But if you're learning more melodic, like lead line stuff, then you know, you know, single note based stuff, I think it's always best to learn it slow, get it right, you build up the muscle memory and then play faster. Um, that's just what I've seen works best. And um, so I hope that helps. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Brian. Brian, thanks for your question. What advice would you give for changing chords and strumming? Oh, Brian, I mean, that's like a huge question that you've just asked there, mate. You know, there's a world of tips I could give you for that. Um, but I guess in general, just to, to like, just to, you know, for somebody who's a real beginner, I would say the best bet is to use stepping stone chords when you're getting started. So instead of playing, you know, chords like a full G, you could just play a G6 chord, you know, which would just be those two. Let me just turn on my other camera here so I can get a bit closer for these shots. So yeah, so like instead of playing, um, instead of playing a G chord like this, you know, then you could just play those two chords, those two uh, notes. Instead of playing a full C chord like this, you can just play those two, and you can even play them like this if you want, as a as a C major seven chord. Instead of playing tough chords like B minor as a bar, then you could just play it as a B minor eleven. All of these easy versions of chords, I call them stepping stones. If you just Google National Guitar Academy stepping stone chords, you'll go to our website and you'll just see like the standard version of the chord and then the easy version next to it. Um, we've got loads and loads of stuff on stepping stone chords, Brian. Just use them, mate. It just makes everything easier. It, it allows you to make music faster and you'll develop your dexterity and your accuracy in your fingers faster that way. And then you can progress to playing the harder, you know, versions of those chords. I think that's probably the single biggest tip that I can give you. It's that just to know there's an easy version of every chord and it's totally okay to use the easy version when you're learning. In fact, it's preferable. You learn faster. As far as strumming is concerned, I wouldn't worry about that too much. I, I think it's best to focus on your chords initially because... If you're using easier chord shapes, then that makes the strumming easier. If you're using tough chord shapes, then you know, you've got two things you've got to worry about. I think if you begin with the stepping stone chords, that makes the strumming much easier. And I think that's, that's the right place to begin. All right, cool. Uh, let's move on to the next question. We've got a question here from Art. Art Prince, cool name, man. Sound like you should be in a band. I like that name. Checking in from Ohio. Anyone with knowledge about square neck resonators have a gold tone Paul Beard signature, which cost about uh, $1,200 $1, new. Uh, what do you need to get for a step up? Do you know what, Art? Oh, I'm sorry, mate, but I don't have any knowledge of resonators. That, that is a type of guitar that has just passed me by. I see them sometimes in guitar shops and they look super cool. And I kind of have a dream one day of sitting and playing like blue slide on a resonator. Um, but it's a type of guitar that I don't have. Unfortunately, if Adam was on the call, I think Adam has got one. I think. I'm not sure about that. Um, so I'm sorry, mate. I can't, I can't help you with that. But hopefully someone can jump in in the chat and, and, uh, and let you know about that. Certainly, um, it's a very, very cool type of guitar. Um, I, I love the way they look. I love the way they sound. And, of course, for anybody who's got even a passing interest in kind of blues and country as well um super super cool yeah i'm sorry oh, let us know like check back you know let us know and in, in the chat you know what is it that you've you know what do you intend to do with it how do you intend to play it are you using it in a band are you using it for recording give us a bit more information mate that sounds interesting i'd like to know more about that hey bruce is here good to see you bruce <laughs> guitar is good yes that should be the motto for the show. Guitar is good. Oh, you went. You meant my guitar. You meant you could sat. You could hear my guitar. <laughs> I thought you were just dropping in the chat there, Bruce, just to say guitar is good. It absolutely is. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for letting me know that they're coming through pretty clear. Um, listen, I want to get to a couple of the questions that we got earlier on from uh, the Slido. I hope that worked for everybody. By the way, um, the Slido link is a way that you can basically submit the questions and like rank them. You can upvote them or downvote them. 
So I think we're going to use that from now on. Quite a good way, I think, of collating, you know, a lot of questions in, in one go. Um, so, yeah, let me switch over here to Slido. Um, okay, the first question we got today on Slido was, Hi, Mike, what song is easy to play using guitar chords? Okay, so super easy beginner track would be something like Horse With No Name. It's just got two chords. E minor. doesn't get much easier than that you know just two fingers planted there and then you just move that pattern down just bouncing back and forth between those two shapes is that whole song sounds really cool nice track um, also you could play songbird by oasis which is uh, g to e minor seven it's not as hard as it looks, but if you want an easy version, you could just play G. Uh, sorry, you could just play G, uh, G6 to E minor. So you've got two options there. Option one is Horse With No Name, which is just E minor to that A sus 2. Or song number two would be Songbird, which is just G to E minor. I hope that helps. Two super easy songs to play that sound really cool, especially on an acoustic guitar. Um, okay, next question. Uh, where's it gone here? Uh, question. This question came in from Stuart. Said, "Hi guys, wondering if I could get some tips on learning scales. Only just started learning, so nothing too taxing. Just something that's not monotonous." Stuart, if you want to get started with scales, then the minor pentatonic scale is the best place to begin. The minor pentatonic scale, super easy. I'm going to play it here, starting on the on the fifth fret. So this is going to be A minor pentatonic because I'm beginning it here. If I was beginning it here, it would be the B minor pentatonic. The only diff that the, the shape stays the same, it's a movable scale, it's a movable shape. Yeah, it's super simple pattern to play. The minor pentatonic scale is where everybody begins. The best way to practice this scale isn't to just ascend and descend the scale. That's super boring, it's dull, it sends people to sleep. The best way to practice that scale is over a backing track. If you just want something really easy, just go into uh, YouTube and type in A minor backing track, or if you want A minor blues backing track, or A minor rock backing track, or whatever you want. Um, a minor country backing track, whatever it is, just set, type that into YouTube, click on one of the videos, and then practice that scale over the backing track. And it's really, really fun. You'll feel like you're playing lead guitar straight away. But if you just practice the scale up and down, it's really, really dull. You'll get bored of it pretty fast. Um, I hope that helps. All right, next question. This is right. We've got everybody. Thank you so much. There's so many cool questions here. This is really great. Um, Taggart said the NGA course with Stephen Stone. Mike, very good course. Thank you, Taggart. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think you. Actually, Stepper Stone chords are mentioned in lots of our courses, but probably Chordmaster is the one that you're thinking of. Um, great, mate. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. I'm pleased you like it. We put a lot of a lot of hard work, a lot of love went into that course. Uh, Richard asks, what are your views on the cage system? Um, my views on the cage system are that it's a really cool way to remember the movable shapes on the guitar. For anybody who doesn't know, there's five movable chord shapes on the guitar, which allow us to make any chord. It's very cool. So if we take a C shape and we move it up, it becomes the chord of D, right? Really, really simple. They're movable shapes. So for example, if we play an E chord here and we move that shape up one fret to here, it's the same shape, I've just moved it up one and then we bar behind it, it's no longer E, it's now an F chord. If we keep going, it's the same shape, it was E. We're gonna move it up to here and play the bar behind it. It's now a G. So we've gone from E, F, G. All right, so just to go back to that and make it really clear, the cage system, the five movable chord shapes that we have on the guitar are C, A, G, E, and D. So caged is a mnemonic that we use to remind us of those five shapes. Super easy. Yeah, a C chord can be moved, an A chord can be moved, a G chord can be moved, an E chord can be moved, and a D chord can be moved. 
If I show you that in practice, right, let's look at that. Here's a C chord. Okay, and I'm using a C shape. Now I'm going to play a C chord using an A shape. It always begins from the last fret of the previous shape. So I'm going to bar there, and now I'm going to play an A shape. Can you see that? That chord there, that's an A chord. If I played it down here, it would be A. But that's not what I'm doing. I've moved it up three frets, haven't I? And now it's a C chord. All right, so I played C here using a C shape. It's a C chord using a C shape. Very easy. Now I'm going to play a C chord using an A shape. And if I begin on the fret where we end there, I can play a C chord using a G shape. Can you see that this is the top of a G chord? And then if I begin on the fret where I ended and do my bar, now I'm using an E shape. That's the next letter in our caged system. That's a C chord using an E shape. And then lastly, if I begin there, I can play uh, a D shape down here. Let me move this around so you can see this a bit more clearly. So what I'm playing here is a D shape, which you'll recognize if I play it like that. And I'm playing it so high, it's a C chord. The cage system is a really, really cool thing to know, um, but really it's just a it's just a, a mnemonic, really. That's the way I think about it. And by the way, if you're just getting started with this, that's probably completely blown your mind. <laughs> Don't worry if you're in that camp. Um, the cage system is an intermediate concept. If you're a beginner, you don't even need to worry about that at all. But if you're an intermediate guitarist, or maybe you're somebody who's kind of plateaued a bit as a rhythm guitarist, and you want something new to get your teeth into, the cage system's super cool to learn about because it unlocks all the chord voicings that are all over the neck. And of course, the more chords you can play, the more chord voicings you know, the more articulate you are as a musician, the more expressive you can be. Um, and it's just much more fun to play the guitar when you've got this wide range of chords that you can draw upon. I hope that helps, Richard. Uh, we could spend the whole live stream talking about the cage system, so I'm just trying to help as many people as I can, so I think we should keep the pace going here. Um, Bruce said, was playing with A7 to E7, what would be a cool chord to apply? Well, I guess, Bruce, if you're just talking about if you were just sitting there having a jam and you were just playing A7, going to E7, and the one that jumps out to me would be a B7, so you could be playing like a, you know, or maybe a blues type thing. A, E, and B always go together nicely. It's up to you, mate. I, I don't know if you remember, Bruce, but on the members live stream, we were talking about the how to work out, quickly find the chords in any key. Remember, mate, all you do is you just go down. So you find the root. So if you were playing an A, you'd go there. And if you just go down one string and along two, they give you the three major chords in any key. Yeah, so if you were playing in A, which is here, then the two major chords that will go best with that is here, which is D, and here, which is E. So A, D, and E will always sound great together, no matter what order you play them in and in it, whatever rhythm you play them in. They'll always work perfectly together. And remember to find the three minor chords of that, you would just go down three frets. So you go to your A, and you just go down one, two, three, and then apply the same shape here, here, and here. But remember, these are minor now. So this would be F sharp minor, B minor. Yeah, you can see the root note moving here. C sharp minor. So for your A and E, Bruce, if you were starting in the key, the key of A, then there's Five chords, that will work really well with A. Let's just recap that again one last time. All right, we're playing in the key of A. Our root note is there, that note is A. Yeah, so we could, we've got our A chord, we can play D, we can play E, or we could play F sharp minor, B minor, or C sharp minor. If you want to make them more bluesy, then you can just make them sevens. 
you know you could play the A, the D and the E as A7, D7 and E7 and then you could play the minor chords as minor sevens you know just to see um, to keep that in a more of a sort of bluesy feel I hope that helps Bruce cool question man thank you for that <laughs> Bobby says he's looking at resonators now they're so cool honestly let me bring one of them up for you like let's let's look at some resonator guitars dude they're so so cool uh, let me see if I can show you this on the uh, on the iPad. I think it'll be easier. Oh God, I'm getting hassled by Apple to update my update my iPad. Okay, let's let's leave that. My iPad isn't working. Let me see if I can find this here. So I think the most famous resonators are uh, the national ones, aren't they? I think they're sort of the. I think so. Am I right in saying that? Please let me know in the chat if I'm wrong. I think that the the national resonators, I think, are the ones that are the most most well known. So here we go. Let's look at this one that's just popped up here when I've searched for it. It's a Gretsch one. Let me share this screen with you, and you guys can see this. Uh, share my screen. Share my screen. Where is it here? Yeah. So check this out. Like that is a gorgeous guitar. That I think. So. Um, the resonator guitars sometimes they're like made i think completely of steel obviously that one there is is wood with the the steel with the metal bottom part of it um, but they just have such a unique sound they're so cool also i think with them um they're really really atmospheric i think those guitars like you you if you get one of those guitars you only need to do two things you put a healthy splash of reverb onto the guitar and a, little, a bit of tremolo as well and just those two things you can just create these like massive moody soundscapes just using those using those two two effects it sounds amazing really really amazing you can just sit and play it all night it sounds so cool steven thanks for letting us know that mate i didn't know i didn't know that slido only has 160 characters Yeah, that's good to know. Maybe we need to set it up differently next time. Thanks, mate. People bag on the band America, but they still want to play America songs and they want to learn the intro to Ventura Highway. Um, do you know what? I'm don't I don't think I even I don't think I know any America songs. Was that the band that Neil Young was in? Was he briefly in America? I don't know if I'm conflating two different things there. Again, let us know in the chat, everybody. Um, I want this to be a place where we can discuss this stuff and learn about it as well. I think, yeah, it's Horse With No Name by America. That's what's in my mind. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, Michael says, are there five positions to the minor pentatonic? Yes, mate, there are five positions to all, all scales. I mean, you can play them in loads of different places depending on what octave you want to play and whereabouts um, but yeah there are five positions to the minor pentatonic although i would say that probably two of them prevail um and of course you can you can dip into all five you know all the time but the two minor pentatonic shapes um that that people use the most is um is shape number one which we already showed yeah so with one finger And that's where everybody begins that's uh, i call that uh, box one or pattern one um, but depending on what key what tonality you're playing in whether it's major or minor sometimes people move them around i think it's easy just to call that box one and that's what i always do because that's the one that everybody begins with so it's the easiest place to start and then the other pattern that you would play that um, actually if i just move that up i'll show you here in e minor just to, because of the way the camera is framed so the other pattern that you play there is and those two i think are the easiest for two reasons number one they're the easiest to remember and to to memorize but number two they sit over the two bar chord shapes that people learn the best and that is e is e a movable e shape bar chord yeah so most people would know their movable e's and their movable a's 
and that's where those two boxes are the ones i just showed you so if you know we're in a so like if you only take one thing from this live stream it should be that the scale patterns are they lie over the bar chords this is the best way to learn where the scales are they sit over the bar chords if you can visualize a bar chord on the neck so if you can visualize an a minor chord there yeah then that minor pentatonic scale pattern sits in that same place that's where it is they both are based off that same root note yeah so we've got our a minor chord That's, that's all happening in the same place your a minor chord and your a minor scale okay but the the other version of that is if i can't really show you an a minor because i don't have a cutaway on this acoustic so let me show you an e minor an e minor bar chord is here yeah if i go that's an e minor bar chord i'm using an a minor shape here and then over that pattern we have if I begin it at the top to make it click really simple for you to see one finger per fret yeah so that pattern there that's how you that's the best way to remember where those patterns are just to remember that the scales sit where the where the bar chords sit the e the movable e's and the movable a's i hope that's clear again for beginners i'm sure that'll be mind-blowing but for intermediate guitarists that's really really cool knowledge it's really really useful to know um michael thanks for that question mate yeah those five that there are five positions but those those two i've just showed you are the ones that get used the most um okay daniel said have you got any exercise to help stretch the little finger out when playing tricky chords? Um, yeah, there's loads, Daniel, but my favorite one is to just use a D chord and then hammer on all around the D chord. So you hold a D shape and then your little finger is gonna go walkies basically. So we play a D chord. We can hammer on here. So on that, on that note there, we can hammer on. We can pull off. We can play up to the fifth fret. Yeah, but we can also play. Can you see all those different places where we're hammering on? That's a really good workout for your little finger because all your other fingers have to stay on the D. And the reason why I, I like that as an exercise is it's more musical, you know, than just like doing exercises in a rote fashion. We actually covered this in a lot of detail recently on our members live stream. Um, any NGA members who are on this call will know that we went through this. Adam and I did like, in fact, we did two live streams all on like finger dexterity and specific exercises um oh yeah tag it says spot on mike yeah so i think it must have been chord mastered the course you were referring to thanks mate I'm, I'm i'm pleased you enjoyed it um drew says coming in late greetings yeah no worries welcome drew welcome aboard bruce says resonators were the pre i think precursor to electric guitars sweet i didn't realize that bruce yeah that makes sense yeah because they're kind of a hybrid aren't they yeah i'm gonna have to look into that they use clever metal cones. Yeah, I'm going to look into that. Thanks, Bruce. You piqued my interest. Um, I'm going to learn about resonator guitars, find out a bit more about them. Odd says, good luck on your resonator search. I'm focusing on square neck reso, which is used in country and bluegrass, whereas the round neck is used more for blues, some jazz. Ah, okay. So the square neck one. Yeah, okay. So, see, to me... You know like coming from the uk country and bluegrass is is a lot less of a thing here 
Um, certainly for me, you know, in the area where I grew up, it was more like, you know, rock, pop, blues, blues based rock, indie music, um, folk music. Um, and yeah, like country music, even though lots of my family members were really into country music, it kind of skipped my sort of generation. It wasn't really around for me, country music, if, I'm, if I think back to it. Um, but as I've got older, I've got us like you guys know, like I've said before on these live streams, like, you know, Nashville, like if there is a guitar capital of the world, it is Nashville, isn't it? Um, and those country guys like, man, they know how to record guitars. You know, like honestly, some of the guitar sounds that I hear in country music is just incredible. Like they really, really know their stuff, those Nashville guys, um, when it comes to guitar. So even though that genre isn't really my background, and there's loads of stuff about that genre that I don't know about. For example, resonated guitars, lap steel guitars, that type of thing. Um, I am fascinated by it and I do, I, I'm sort of respectful of it, you know, even though I don't really understand it. Um, and actually one of my musical recommendations for today, my iPad's broke, which is kind of typical of how the software works. Everything breaks <laughs> when we connect to it. Um, but one of the, um, the artist that I wanted to recommend to everybody today is a guy called Jason Isbell, uh, who's a country artist who recently came on my radar. I can't show you because unfortunately my iPad's broken, but Jason Isbell, I-S-B-E-L-L. -L. Now, if anybody watching this stream is into country music, they probably already know who he is, um, but I'd never heard of him until this week. And I'm really, really impressed with his, his songwriting, the way he tells stories, um, some of his stuff's a bit heavy. It's kind of, you know, it's pretty deep. But again, like amazing production. So cool. Really well put together songs. Um, if you uh, if you haven't heard of Jason Isbell, then please check him out on Spotify. He's a really, really cool songwriter. Um, yeah, so oh, thank you for that, mate. This is great. This is This is what I love about doing the live streams is that we get to learn stuff like this together. Super cool. Um, yeah, okay, so as far as resonators are concerned, Brian, thanks, Brian, says Mark Knopfler played National on Brothers in Arms album. Brilliant album. I love that album. I remember listening to that as a kid. That was like the first CD I ever remember seeing was a Brothers in Arms CD. One of my friends, I thought, like, I thought it was really posh because he had the CD player in 1986 or something, and we listened to Brothers in Arms on his CD player. It sounded amazing. Some great guitar sounds on that album. Some such cool guitar work on that album. Yeah, I did know that Neil Young was in um, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Yeah, I did. He's had quite he's had a really interesting career, hasn't he, Neil Young? He's been involved in so many different projects and had so many different, you know, eras. You know, I always admire that in an artist when they can re reinvent themselves and go down different, you know, avenues so cool um okay let's go back to our slido questions uh where do we get to here yeah so steve said uh steve said what are your thoughts on door software i'm experiencing a steep learning curve i have ableton audacity and bandlab i simply want to record my playing progress okay so for anybody who doesn't know a door is uh that stands for d-a-w a door is i think it's digital audio workstation i think is what it stands for and a, a door a daw is basically a piece of software that you use to record music so garage band is a door ableton logic pro tools you know there's lots of different um there's lots of different ones but they all do the same thing they basically record whatever you put into it so in the context that we're talking about here, it's, you know, probably guitars and vocals, bass guitars, that type of thing. But you can record anything with that stuff. You know, loads of people would just use it for, you know, mixing beats, synths, drum machines, literally anything under the sun. Um, so to go back to the specific question that Steve asked, what are your thoughts on the software? I think, I think it's ace. I think it's ace. The only problem is, um, is that some of it, it really got, you have to learn a lot, Steve, you know, it's like, it's not, it's not something you can enter into lightly. Um, so I would recommend strongly that you use something easy like GarageBand, um, because if you're just getting started with it, then if you dive into something like, you know, Logic or Pro Tools or something like that, you know, people go to college to learn how to use that software. 
um, certainly if you're going to get into it, um, then you need to kind of set aside some time to actually learn it, you know, and treat it as a project. I'm, I've actually done that recently. Um, I've got a huge backlog of songs that I want to record. Um, so I've been learning more about how to use Logic and it's been fun, you know, like to sort of go through and sit and watch some videos and learn about it. Um, there's loads of free videos on YouTube that will teach you how to use those platforms. But what I would say, Steve, is if you just want to record your progress as a guitarist, you do not need to use a door. Just use your phone. Just record yourself using your phone. That's all you need. Um, and if you, you know, just to, to go easy on the memory on your phone, just use the voice memo app on your phone and you can hear, you know, but the file size will be way, way lower than if you recorded using the video as well. Um, unless you want to record the video to see how your chord changes are progressing. Um, but definitely you don't need a door to just kind of, you know, have a record of your progress. Um, I hope that helps. Again, we could do a whole live stream on doors. It's a, hu it's a huge and interesting um, part of the guitar world. Um, okay. <laughs> Thanks everybody for the comments about America. Um, brilliant. Thank you. America is made up of some American military brats who were stationed in England at one time. I think Neil Young is a Canadian and was in Buffalo Springfield and then Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. And then Arthur Dad. Okay. Interesting. So I wonder, like, is that how they got together then? Were they like all on a base somewhere or or something like that? I don't know. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do some research on this. Um Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Thank you everybody for putting that on my radar. Uh let me scroll down here and try and catch up with the more recent comments. Yeah, so everybody, please, um, please keep the questions coming. We've still got some more in Slido to get through. Uh, I want to try and make sure I don't leave anybody hanging tonight. So if you've got any questions, please drop them in here. And oh, yeah, also, so before we carry on, um, everybody, if you are enjoying the, the live stream, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get our subscriber numbers up. Um, and please like the video. We want more people to find this. Um, and a couple of people commented like that we didn't have as many likes on the video as we should for how many views we've had. I think it's probably because I always forget to mention it. So please like the video. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Yeah, so Bruce said that he loses the middle finger in that D position, makes the pinky a bit more free. Yeah, you can always, you know, remember that whenever you play a D chord, everybody, you don't always have to play it as a full D. You can play a D chord, you know, in its standard position like this. It's absolutely fine to play that as a D sus two if you want. Yeah, and you can even change the finger into that. Also, it's absolutely fine to play the D chord by squishing those three down and then adding one finger there. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the times, that makes it easier for you to do those hammer ons. So, those are the positions that we were speaking about before. Oh, excuse me. So for those other D uh, hammer-ons, it can be quite hard to do them if your finger's in that shape. But if you play the D in a different voicing, that makes it easier for the uh, to do those other hammer-ons. Never, ever be afraid to alter the chord voicings that you use. You don't have to just use them the traditional way. As guitarists, we reconfigure our chord voicings all the time for convenience depending on what chord we're coming from and what chord we're going to or depending on what bit of lead we might want to play uh, you know to embellish that chord again as an entry point or something that we're going to use as we move on to something else in the future absolutely fine to mix up your chord voicings great comments here everybody on the resonators thank you Good to see the some of the history from that. Yeah, very cool. Thank you. There's lots of America fans on here. Like, wow, we've really opened the we've opened the we've opened Pandora's box on America here. I'm gonna have to get onto this. I feel left out. Um, yeah, we'll check that out. Thank you. Stuart says, saw country singer Jesse Daniel last week in Birkenhead. He was very good, some excellent acoustic play. Yeah, cool. I didn't realize you were so close to me, Stuart. 
Um, for anybody who's watching from around the world, Birkenhead is like, like I don't know, 25 minutes from where I am here. Um, that's cool. Jesse Daniel. I've not heard of Jesse Daniel, but again, I'll check him out. Art says, Jason Isbell is great. His first band was Drive By Truckers. Yeah, I, I've honestly been really impressed. Like, even though, it's sort, sort of weird really, because I didn't necessarily enjoy his songs so much as I was like kind of respected them. <laughs> you know, they were like, I could tell they were like really well written, really well made songs, amazing production, great storytelling. Um, but it was, a, some of it was a bit too heavy for me, you know, like maybe it was just the mood I was in, um, but like, wow, you could tell he's a really, really good songwriter, great voice, really, really impressive. Yeah, okay, listen, we're gonna take a quick break from the Q&A, everybody, because there's a couple of other things that I wanted to share with you, super quick, just to switch gears. So number one, I had a gear recommendation for you, and it was super simple. It was uh, a string winder. So for those of you that don't have a string winder, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on this. A string winder is very, very simple. It's a device that you can use to put on the fret, or sorry, to put on the machine heads of your guitar, and then you can just wind it really quick. So it's a really fast way when you're changing your strings to bring your strings up to pitch. It's a really fast way to slacken them off, to take the tension out. You know, if you're just doing it by hand, it takes ages if you use a string winder, it's much, much faster. If you get a good string winder like this one, which is a Planet Waves one, it has a pair of pliers built in. So let me see if you can see that. So can you see at the top here, when you open it up, yeah, you've got some pliers there, so that you use them for snipping off the strings, which is really useful. And then also on the bottom of this one, there is a notch. Can you see that here? So that notch allows you to remove pegs from acoustic guitars. It's not quite turning out in the cam. There we go. You can sort of see it there. So that notch allows you to remove pegs from acoustic guitars. Um, so yeah, I mean, everybody should have a string winder, every guitarist, um, but certainly if you get one like this, it's got everything on it that you need, so you don't need the separate pair of pliers, um, or, you know, like a spoon or anything. I used to use a spoon to remove acoustic guitar uh, pegs, you know, without damaging the, the wood of the guitar. Um, yeah, string winder is awesome. Very, very simple, but handy little things. Um, and then the other recommendation that I had for you was, uh, where was it now? I just put it over here. Uh, let me grab this super quick because we showed it on the members live stream. It's a really, really useful bit of kit. Okay, so if you want to clean your guitar and without taking off the strings of your guitar, uh, you can get one of these little things. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically it's got like little bits of microfiber cloth on it and it opens up and then it has the cloth on the inside as well. And then the idea is if you want to keep your guitar nice and clean, clean your fretboard, then you open it up and you put it underneath the sound hole and then close it. And then you can just rub it along the neck and it will clean both sides of your strings and the neck all in one go. It's a really cool way to be able to clean up your fretboard and stop your guitar from getting dusty. I just love that. It's such a simple little gadget. Both of those things, I think the string winder was about 10, 10 pounds, $15. And this other gadget, I don't even know what that was called. Um, guitar, I don't know what it was called, um, but you can find them on Amazon. You know, if you just type in guitar maintenance kit, guitar cleaning kit, something like that. Um, very, very cool. Um, another recommendation that I wanted to share with you, on each one of these live streams, you wanna do Q and A, but I also wanna share some recommendations, give you some tips, um, talk about gear, talk about albums and artists. I think last week we spoke about The Clash. Um, today, I wanted to recommend to you um, a, an absolute very, very different type of music, but that was uh, Henry Mancini who is you know a very very like just an amazing dude what an interesting man what a life what a career you know one of the best songwriters of all time um you know he's really well known for stuff like you know breakfast at tiffany's um 
but the album of his that I've been listening to this week is the is the Peter Gunn soundtrack. Peter Gunn was a 1960s detective type show, I think. Um, and it's got a really famous, like the opening track of that, of that, that it is like so famous, like dun 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 dun. Brilliant song, absolutely amazing song. But the rest of that album is just really dreamy, interesting, like fifties jazz ballads. But it's so cool the way it's put together, so atmospheric. Um, so yeah, my my musical recommendation for this week is the Peter Gunn soundtrack on Spotify. Let me see if I can grab the. Um, yeah, here we go. Let me see if I can grab a, a link to it. So it's such a cool album, honestly. Uh, here we go, album Peter Gunn. Tell you what I'll do. I will grab the, here we go, copy the album link. I think I can post it straight here in the chat. There we go. So I just dropped it in the chat. Uh, anybody that wants to hear some amazing music written by one of the best composers of all time, Go and check that out. Like it couldn't be more different to the Clash. <laughs> Last week we were speaking about the Clash. You know, if you listen to "From Here to Eternity" by the Clash, their live album, absolutely amazing album, one of my all-time favorite live albums. Um, then after that, you feel like you want to lie down. Go and listen to this Henry Mancini album. So cool, absolutely amazing. Um, all right, cool. Let me get back to. Oh, okay, yeah. So. Um, when we were speaking before about the about using a door or using something to keep track of your progress as a guitarist, um, Stephen said phone sounds terrible. Well, actually, Stephen, a lot of the time, if you have like a modern, you know, iPhone, the microphones are actually really good. What's really crap on them is the speakers, um, but actually, the microphones on them are actually really good. Um, so if you just get a decent, you know, pair of cans or you know, I don't really like those earbuds, the, you know, the wireless ones, the quality of them, I, I just don't think is there, even the expensive ones. I think you need a wired pair of headphones. Um, you'll find that the audio quality isn't that bad. Um, it's actually pretty good, especially for acoustic guitars. James, thank you for this. James said he found the free version of Audacity to be fairly easy to use. Yep, yeah, James, I use Audacity all the time. Audacity isn't really a door. It's a, it's more of a wave editor. But, but it's a really good shout, yeah. So, like, if you wanted to record on your computer without getting bogged down in any of the, like, you know, different channels that you have with the door, um, Audacity is a good way to go. And also, the other cool thing is Audacity is free, which is amazing. I love Audacity. Yeah, Stephen said the same thing. It is very cool. <laughs> Michael said, my phone has recordings that I keep hidden. The wife is quite the critic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it goes, Michael, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just scanning down here for any other um, questions anybody's got. We're going to be finishing up in about 10 minutes, everybody. So if you've got any other questions, please, uh, please drop in. Thank you for all of your comments here. Thanks for all of the, um, thanks for all of the feedback, everybody. Really appreciate that. So Stuart says, I'm due to change the strings on my guitar and I dread it every time. <laughs> I think I'm going to snap the strings every time I'm winding them on. Yeah. So Stuart, I wish I had like a simple fix for that. Um, but it, it is just practice, mate. It's just practice. You've just got to keep doing it and just accept that you will mess up. You know, most people, most beginners will, will snap strings. Um, you know, usually your first two or three times you change your strings, you'll, you'll mess up. Um, but that's just kind of, you know, how it goes. What I would say is to learn my preferred way of doing that. Um, please just Google, you know, National Guitar Academy, how to change strings. Um, and the, our YouTube video will pop up for that. Um, we did a YouTube video it was years ago, actually, it was about eight years ago, um, at our old studio where Andy, um, who's now our forum master for our members, um, and he just got a GoPro and he basically just like followed my fingers and we did like a st absolute step by step of how to change your guitar strings. Um, the video quality isn't great, you know, it's not like in 4K or anything, but you can absolutely still see it. Um, so please, if you want to know the best way to change your strings, um, just do that now. Google, you know, how to National Guitar Academy, how to change your strings 
um, and that will show you the best way to do it. Uh, what's this evening? This, this evening's beverage, Mike Bruce. It is a Bira Moretti, which is a type of lager that I've been trying out lately. Um, unfortunately, I've run out of Guinness here at the studio. I like to keep the beer fridge fully stocked. Um, I would much rather be drinking Guinness than this. I actually got this from my brother, um, but it's okay. You know, it's not it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I, I I would much rather be drinking a, a Guinness. <laughs> Uh, Drew says, yeah, the, the Pink Panther song. Yeah, that's Henry Mancini. I, that's probably maybe his famous, his most famous track. Uh, oh no, maybe maybe Moon River is probably Henry Mancini's most famous track. Um, but the Pink Panther song again, what a great tune! Like so full of character. What an amazing song. Um, okay, <laughs> Gary says, have you heard of a thing called sausage fingers for your guitar? Gary, I have not, but I'm intrigued. Um, let us know, mate, what is that? Sausage fingers. Is that like some type of affliction or problem that people get from playing? Or is that some type of, I don't know, finger aid to help people play? Or some type of slide? Or I don't know. Uh, I have not heard of that, Gary. Please, please let us know in the chat. Short Brunette Communication. I love the Peter Gunn theme. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, what a tune. What an absolute belter of a song that is, the Peter Gunn theme. It's so good. Um, yeah, I might, ha I might have to check out the show. I mean, it has to be one hell of a show to live up to that theme tune. Um, but yeah, I think I, I will check that out. Uh, Robert asks, where do I start for learning blues? Robert, we have a course called Blue Secrets, which I think is the easiest possible on-ramp into the blues world. Um, it's not actually on sale to the public right now, but it is inside our membership. Um, so yeah, mate, you can sign up for our membership, um, and start Blue Secrets today. It's a brilliant course. Um, other than that, if you Google National Guitar Academy, how to learn blues, there's loads of free written guides on our website. Um, but if you want a video course, like I say, check out our membership. Um, really to get started with blues, you just need to learn 12 bar blues. That's the only place to begin. Um, that's the you know classic 12 bar blues pattern is the best place to begin for everybody who wants to get started with the blues james said can record in audacity and play through guitar amp yeah yeah you could do yeah you could output it that way um it might be a little bit sort of fiddly depending on um if he has an audio interface and so on but yeah it, maybe maybe it would work easily if we just came out with the headphone jack of the laptop maybe um robert thank you robert said i like your solo act good job very enjoyable robert thank you yeah um we do normally do this with adam um but he's not available today but i do miss him it's it is it's good to, it's good having a co-host you know for years i did you know most of our videos alone um but it, it is it, it is really good having a co-host to bounce ideas off and so i'm missing tonight hopefully he'll be back for the next one um, great comment here. So Marco says, a great band for chord practicing is Creedence Clearwater Revival. A lot of their songs are written in major open chords and really help you nail chord changing. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, you know, Creedence are a brilliant beginner guitar band. Um, and, I'll, you know, they've got, again, some brilliant catchy pop songs, haven't they? Um, Proud Mary, I think, is a really good beginner, beginner track. Um, but you've got, there's so many you know, so many fun songs that you can learn by Credence. Um, yes, that's right, Bruce, it is. It's an Italian beer. It's okay. It's not, I'm not a huge fan, but it's okay. It's all right. It's not bad. I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to beer, but it's, it's, it's not too bad. Um, all right. I want to just go back to Slido. There's a couple of questions there I wanted to hit on before we wrap up. Um, and that is, uh, where's it gone now? I was looking at one of these questions before. Uh, oh yeah, so John said that he plays an A chord. Let me show this to you guys, right. John said that he plays his A chords, like instead of playing like this with like a, cla you know, a, a typical A shape, he plays like this. So he swaps those fingers around. So it's like a D shape sort of, but all, you know, within the second fret. And John's comment was, that he finds it easier, he, that he thinks it's more efficient to play A chords like this, to transition to A7, A minor, D, E, E minor, E7, even C and others than the current A. Um, John, I'm going to give that a try because 
<clears throat> I don't know if I would be able to unlearn, you know, like decades of muscle memory of playing A that way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, I'm absolutely open to it, mate, and I'll, I'll certainly give that a try. I'll kick it around this week um, and see that. It doesn't feel right to me, but that's just because I'm used to playing it the other way. Um, but yeah, like everybody, give that a try. John thinks that that's a much more efficient way to move to other chords, so we shouldn't be afraid of these things, should we? Uh, we should give them a try. And then, was that the last Slido question that we had? Oh yeah, so Dave said, so this is an interesting one. Dave said, in the beginning of my guitar journey, things came slowly and I would question if it was worth it. Any suggestions on struggling through these dark valleys? So it's a great question, Dave. You know, it's very easy for people who've reached the other side of the valley to just be like, oh, just keep going, man, you'll be okay. Um, but I do know that some people really, really struggle with motivation when they're learning the guitar. And it can be very demotivating if you're not making the progress that you want. All I can say for that is the best way to learn guitar is to make everything easy and fun. And this is something that I learned teaching people guitar, you know, in one-to-one -one situations for years and years and years. And that's that if you make it easy and fun, then of course you'll keep doing it because it's easy and it's fun. And if something's easy and fun, you, you know, you'll, you'll do it all day long because it's easy and it's fun. But if, if you don't have those two things in place, then it can become a real slog. And that's why you need a teacher. So whether that's me or a local guitar teacher or a million other online guitar teachers or whatever it is, you need a guide, someone who can say, do it this way. You know, it's easy and fun if you do it like this. You know, so like simple things like, you know, put, put an extra light gauge strings on your guitar. You know, that makes a huge difference. It makes it easier to press the strings down. It's gentler on your fingers. Your chords sound crisper and cleaner straight away. You know, playing a guitar with a thin neck you know, it makes a massive, massive difference to the experience of learning the guitar using stepping stone chords. You know, all these little things, they all lower the pain. <laughs> you know, if you think learning the guitar, there's some pleasure on one side and there's some pain on the other, isn't there? And what we're trying to do is, is keep the pleasure side of things as high as it can be and reduce the pain side. So all these little tips, they all just, you know, reduce the pain by a little by a little by a little, and that allows you to make progress um, the most important thing if you're feeling like you're like you're not making progress the most important thing is to just play music that you love like forget about exercise and drills and all of this type of thing and just learn songs that you love music that you really really love don't learn music that your guitar teacher recommends to you because they like it it needs to be something you like that you relate to and that matters and means something to you and then on those days when it's a slog, you know, that you love the song so much that helps power you through. Also, if it's a song you already know and love, you already have all of this inherent, you know, history with the track, which helps you with the timing of when the chord changes and when the lyrics say this, I know I changed to this and so on. Learn songs that you love. Use stepping stone chords to learn them. Don't get bogged down in theory or lead. Just go wholly with chords. Put extra light gauge strings on your guitar learn with a guitar with a thin neck and you'll make progress really really smoothly and if you can make it easy and fun then you will keep doing it and the more you do it the faster you'll make progress okay i think we're about done everybody let's just whiz through these last few comments i don't want to leave anyone hanging here um okay yeah so gary said i think this is going back to the sausage fingers thing it's a silicone in a thing shaped like a sausage that you wipe over your guitar to get the moisture off the neck of your guitar after playing. It's really good. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Gary. I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get one of them. Um, I'm not really a, like a sweaty player. Some people like sweat like crazy. I played in a band for years with a guy who would just sweat like you wouldn't believe, especially on stage under the stage lights. Um, so I don't really have a problem with moisture on my guitar, but I know some people do. Definitely loads of people that, you know, in our audience um, will be interested in that. So I'll check that out. Yeah, very cool. Thanks, Gary. This is the great thing about live stream, everybody. You know, we get to bounce these ideas around and learn new things. Hey, Cherry, Cherry Mariah. Hey, from Norway. Cool. Welcome to the stream. 
Uh, have you heard of a band called the Shipbuilders from Liverpool? I have not, Gary. No. Um, they sound like they're probably from Birkenhead. I don't know. You know, like the, the ships were built on the other side of the Mersey, weren't they? Maybe they're from Rock Ferry or somewhere like that. Um, but no, I've not heard of them. I'll check them out. Um, Drew says, most excellent session. Thanks for all you're doing to pr promote musicianship. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, as you all know, I think music's the best thing in the world and we need it. You know, we need it. It's good for us. It brings us together. It's great for your mental health. It's great for your creativity, keeping your brain sharp. And I think it's a unifying force. I love music. I love it more and more every day. I really do as the years go by. I'm not tired of it at all. I, I, I'm sort of in awe of it, you know, more the older I get. <laughs> uh, Bruce says, Creedence Clearwater Revival was the first album I bought a bit back in the day. <laughs> yeah, super. I, do you know what, Bruce? I love those songs, you know, I really do. You know, you listen to like a best of Creedence album, you know, like it's just, fill, it's just filled with great songs, you know, pop songs that you can enjoy. Um, Cherry Mariah says, what do you think about the John Frusciante, Jimi Hendrix bar? Yeah, so um, just super quick before we wrap up, everybody, this is when we play a bar with our thumb. So, you know, so like instead of playing a bar chord like this, we will play it like this. So you bring your thumb over the top. And this is one of the benefits of playing this way is that your, your hands are already closer to play some lead. if we're playing a bar we've got to move our wrist and sort of faff around a little bit more um, i actually didn't know that that was a john frusciante from the, the the chili peppers or a Jimi hendrix thing i i just i learned that way myself i'm a, a completely self-taught guitarist which is the absolute worst possible way to learn guitar um and i just sort of did that out of convenience which i assume is the same reason why they did it um, but yeah, I think it's an essential technique. I think it's probably the best the best reply. I think it's something every guitarist should learn and know because it opens up all the chord options for you. It makes it much easier to play some chords and it makes it much easier to get in and out of lead um, of, of, of lead as well. So yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, everybody, I think we are done. Progress is the key, not pursuit to perfection. That's so true. Tag it, thank you. Um, Michael says, NJ is the best. Got that like button. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, so actually, that's that's how people finish these live streams, isn't it? I've got to get better at this. If you enjoyed the live stream, everybody, please like the video. I hope you've learned some interesting new things. If you have, um, please click the like. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, we really want to get our subscriber count a bit higher. Um, I hope that we've covered lots of useful stuff for you here today. The best light gauge set of strings, I would go with a Dario extra light gauge, um, or maybe on the electric guitar, just light gauge even would be fine if you're a beginner um, for electric guitar. I, I prefer extra light gauge string for acoustic guitars. Um, yeah, I play, for years I played nines. Um, I've recently started playing tens. And just helps me control bends a little bit more. Um, the Dario strings are great. The Ernie Ball strings are great as well. Um, oh yeah, Bruce said I like ten. Yeah, yeah, me too, Bruce. I've settled on tens. I'm really, really happy playing tens now. Um, I use Christmas music to learn guitar. It's great for that. <laughs> yeah, it is good to know some Christmas songs when Christmas comes around. Great to play some Christmas songs and you know like a parties or whatever. Everybody joins in. The kids love it. It is really good to know some Christmas songs. Um, all right, I think we've covered pretty much everything here. Uh, last question here, short or long scale guitar. I think there's a place for both. Um, I've got I've got both types. I love them. I love them both. Um, I think, yeah, it's definitely good to have both. Just remember that sometimes you might need to change your string gauge, you know, as you're moving between different scale lengths. Um, but definitely you want to have both types. Um, everybody, thank you so much. Stuart, thanks for your questions. Great to hear that. Everybody seems to have really enjoyed this. Um, 
and yeah playing barcodes with your thumb it's a thing yeah <laughs> give it a try everybody thank you very much um please like the video please subscribe to the channel um hopefully adam will be back with us next week um i hope you got a lot out of today's sessions great to see everybody joining here thank you so much for all of your comments thank you for getting involved thank you for supporting the work that we're doing it means the absolute world to us thank you very much um have a great rest of your day and i'll catch up with you all soon thanks everybody